Well, welcome. I uh, appreciate everybody being here. My name is Rob Kadama, and I'll be your moderator today. So today we have the pleasure of speaking with Leslie Coe and Sarah Hardin, the Chief Technology Officer and Director of Marketing and Communications of Cardinal Gibbons High School in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, and share their experience with Vitagami and how we have become a key technology used by the school and an essential part of the EdTech program. So I'm excited for Cardinal Gibbons to share their journey related to how the role of photos and videos have grown from volume of content to applications for this content. Um, I'm certain that we share a common experience in why I truly believe that Vitagami is becoming a necessity for every school and organization. Um, I'm a couple couple housekeeping uh, items. Uh, most importantly, there will be a survey at the very end. So if you wouldn't mind, please uh, complete the survey for us. That will help us to improve our webinars in the future. Um, you know, go ahead and type in your, your um, questions in the chat, uh, you know, and we will get to those near the end. Unless if it's pertinent, we can get to them in that moment of time. So I'm going to ask uh, <laughs> Leslie and Sarah to introduce themselves uh, from Cardinal Gibbons High School. Hi, I'm, I'm Sarah Harden. I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing. And I've been at Cardinal Gibbons almost three years now. I'm really excited to talk about Vitagami today. I've had a lot of experience with other photo software that hasn't been as great. So um, I think this is a great opportunity to share how we've utilized this technology. And I am Leslie Coe. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Cardinal Gibbons. I have been here, I think, 11 years now. And I have the privilege of looking at uh, sort of all of our global needs and helping facilitate the right software selection for different things we do and working with Sarah Hardin to execute my grand, my grandiose ideas for how we can use these tools <laughs> in our community. Teamwork, teamwork. Uh, yeah. All right. That, that's great. You guys are such a great team. I, I love working with you. So yeah. I am um, Renee Ramick. I um, have 35 years of experience in education. Um, and I'm now at Vitagami and I work with schools to help them find the best way to use Vitagami for their school. You'll find out that there is a lot of different ways that Vitagami is very flexible, but we are designed solely for schools. So that's what makes Vitagami great. Let's go ahead and move to the agenda. Perfect. So we are going to start with why Vitagami and Sarah and Leslie are going to talk about why they first went to Vitagami. What were their needs that brought them to looking for a media management solution? Why did they choose Vitagami? And then what does it look like today, um, you know, a little over like six years later, seven years later at their school? We'll talk about how they have used Vitagami to organize and share out media, how it's used in marketing and communication, and also just amazingly how they're now using it in learning and with the students at their school. So I wanted to mention that at the um, we are going to stay in the slideshow for the beginning of the webinar, and then at the end, we're definitely going to pop up because thank you for being willing to share your live um, Cardinal Gibbon site, and they'll actually show you a lot of the things we're talking about as we go through our slides. So like with Cardinal Gibbon, most schools come to Vitagami because they have a media management need. So their photos are usually all over the place. People can't find them. They don't have access to them. I always tell the story, so I apologize if you've been at um, attended other webinars is that the reason I started looking at Seven Hill School about 10 years ago is as the tech person, I would walk in and have a flash drive sitting on my desk in the morning. No notes, no nothing. I'd put it in. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing with the photos. Did the person need the flash drive back? Who did the flash drive belong to? And so just looking for a solution where not only could people find photos, but that our community could upload their own photos for all of us to access was my goal when I looked for Vitagami. So Sarah and Leslie, tell me about why you started looking for something in 2017 and how is it, it has expanded to today. Um, Renee, I can take that since I was actually mostly responsible for that change. Um, Perfect. <laughs> at the time, we were really beginning to, we had a really robust um, growth in our student media and we had a marketing director that was taking a lot, a lot of photos. 
And what we started to find is that the photos were being downloaded and stored in people's personal drives and their own computers. They were just kind of everywhere. And someone had made a really good hearted attempt to organize things in smug mug. And it worked if you understood how they navigated. If you were internal to the school and understood our court categories of navigation, it worked, you could get your photos. But what we found was people were inconsistent about contributing and it was really hard for people to navigate. So what they often did is just emailed us and said, hey, <laughs> I saw a photographer or someone took those pictures, can I have them? And now our staff was spending a lot of time searching for their kid, trying to identify their kid. And as the school was growing, we didn't know the kids as well. Like we, it's not a school of 40 kids, it's 1600. So it really became challenging to identify the photo and satisfy the parent ask or even the news station asks. We just had a lot of asks we couldn't manage. So I started looking for a way to organize and manage those things that were a little bit differently. And what fa I found personally really appealing was the ability to have content that was organized. You could have content in multiple places. So it wasn't dependent on one person's brain for what a file structure could look like. And I thought that concept was so unique that for, as an IT person, I was really intrigued. And that's how we started really, was how can we get this holistically and meet all of these needs that were all over the place? Yeah, and I would say today um, we're using it. It's a huge tool for us, both from um, a parent engagement standpoint and a community standpoint for learning. Um, it really empowers parents now, instead of having to email me or email a teacher or a coach, they can just go right into Vitagami and find the photos they're looking for. So we upload photos from athletic events and any other kind of event going on, on campus, a concert. Um, and with the facial recognition, it it automatically tags their, their students so they can easily find photos of that student in particular, or just look at all the photos from the entire game and, and see you know, see that story kind of in action. Um, and I will say, and this happened recently, is we had someone leave the school who'd been here for a really long time. And one of the active tasks I ended up taking on was going through their home directory and finding all the content that never made it to Vitagami previously and putting that in the right years. But going forward, that's not something I'm going to have to worry about the same way because we're no longer storing secret content in <laughs> random places. Yeah. It's like a one-stop shop now. It's so much easier and quicker for us to find photos either by search or by we've had really intentional categories and albums that we created. So it's super simple to find things quickly, like when someone comes in and needs something. That's great. And I love that, you know, we sort of went through all your goals in 2017 and we put them in this sort of table format to see yeah. that, you know, all of your goals were met and, you know, but they've, they've been tweaked a little bit, right? So yeah. one of the things we'll talk to it about at the end of the slideshow and then demonstrate this in the live part is one of the things that I don't think you really thought about a lot when you were looking for a media management solution was how would it contribute to learning? Yeah. Right? Um, and yet that's now, from what you've shared with me, a really big piece of Vitagami. Yes, we because we were able to successfully build this foundation and partnership, while it is serving marketing super well, it is actually now an active part of our classroom and student portfolio, and it is now written into some curriculum. And we'll walk through some of that in our live site of how we are doing that with students and using the tool to teach proper photo curation, content um, description, and appropriate tagging and categorizing of photos and artwork. And, and so, you know, what we like to say here is that marketing is really the beneficial beneficiary of all of this, right? Because, you know, especially even at a small school, the marketing person cannot be the only person walking around with a camera taking photos, right? And so you have access to now all this content to do the things you need to do well in marketing without having to spend 90% of your day trying to get that media. The media is coming to you and it's also meeting all these other needs, the coaching needs, the learning needs, the you know, the parent wanting to see what's happening in the school with their kids, especially high school students, right, that don't always share a lot with their parents. So, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely, Renee. I'm a huge beneficiary as the communication, the marketing um, director. We have a weekly newsletter that we put out every Wednesday, and I love the feed feature because I can just go on and kind of scroll and see what kind of photos have been posted and just grab stuff for that newsletter. I don't have to feel like I have to be at every event running around. Um, so it's it's a great collaborative tool for us to curate photos and then use in all kinds of places. Yeah, and um, also I know you mentioned to me once, you know, as your school grow, grew, you don't know every single student. Um, and so having that face tagging also, if you have to look up specific students, you said was also helpful. It was, and and I think we'll talk a little bit more about it as we yep. move through. But the, um, yep, absolutely. What we some of the reasons we started and where we've ended up have taken a lot of strategy, a lot of revision, a lot of thought process, and a lot of collaboration between technology, marketing, and classroom teachers and students, community. Like it's, we're constantly revising to make this the best experience for our whole community. I love that. And I think that is one of the keys of our schools that are super successful with Vitagami, including Cardinal Gibbons, is that it's a team approach. You know, yeah. Vitagami or any media management tool, actually, but especially Vitagami should not live only with marketing, right? Because again, you're the beneficiary and you need these photos, but having input from all these people and then having it grow to be an actual integral part of learning was because it was a team approach. And, you know, both of you are wonderful in involving the team and allowing others to have input in how Vitagami works and looks at your school. Vitagami is solely for schools. And we realize schools work on an annual cycle. So each year, this is the great thing about Vitagami that other media management platforms just don't do, yeah. is you start fresh. You create a new archive for that school year. But we also realize schools in general tend to look the same from year to year with a few tweaks. So we easily allow to clone those containers, we call them pages where you're putting these your media, um, and then being able to easily edit them. And as both Leslie and Sarah mentioned, you know, things might change over the years and your organization might need to be tweaked. And it's really easy to do that in Vitagami. So Leslie and Sarah, can you talk a little bit about how you organize now and maybe a little process about how things maybe have changed a little bit since 2017? Yeah, I, I can give the, the history of how we started with our categories, which is what you're looking at on the screen, our academics, athletics, events, fine arts. Uh, initially, what we tried to do is align that with what I call our top level categories from our website, because those are the large buckets of the school. So we started there and that gave us a foundation to figure out where we needed to make adjustments as the years went on. So that's a good cloning mechanism for us is, all right, what are and we've changed those categories on our website over time. So what matters to the school? What are the large buckets of areas that people might initially look to receive Items. Sometimes we found ourselves a little too far in internally and we're naming buckets for things that were too specific. So we kind of backed out. So that's where you get our top categories, academics, athletics, fine arts, et cetera. And I would say the two largest changes and iterations we made in the past few years, uh, one is professional photography. And I will, I'm going to actually toss that to Sarah for a second to explain how she does that part because it's that's her wheelhouse, and I think she's doing amazing with it. Yeah, professional photography, we found we wanted a way to kind of group all the professional photography together, but we also wanted um, students to see that photography. So by using the, um, the watermark feature, we can make that ac accessible to everyone. They can see it, but they can't download it. And we can then, we have information at the top of that album where they can go and buy the photography from that photographer if they want that image, which they often do, we, you know, we used to get emails and stuff asking, I saw a photographer there, I would love these images. Um, so now they have a place where they can go grab that stuff. They don't have to contact anyone. They know exactly where to go. Oh, and, and we'll demonstrate that at the end. Um, we'll be sharing that on your live site, correct? Uh, yes, we'll demonstrate okay. that on our live site. And it's also created a larger, um, kind of a little bit of a community component to that because we are able to direct our our community to purchase those photos. They've developed a relationship with that photographer outside of here, and it's allowed us to work on negotiable rates with photographers. Wow. Hey, we'll show, we'll hire you to come to the event. 
we will not sell or give away your stuff and it's still allow you to make money off of your art. It's been a really powerful engagement tool when seeking new photographer relationships for the school. Yeah, and having, we put up like photos around our school every year that get changed out. So having it all in that one bucket of professional photography makes it really easy to find those photos that are high resolution that we need for printing. Um, but then we also can easily add those same photos to our category. So for example, I'll show you all later. Um, we had a concert in December. Well, that's in the professional photography section and it's in the fine arts section. So I understand that people, students aren't going to be looking under professional photography, but they will look under music and fine arts for, for their photos. Oh, I, lo I love that. And the fact that you now have this relationship and, you know, you're saving money and it sounds like you're saving time because you're not having to, to track down photos that, you know, specific parents want access to. It's all on them to be able to do that within Vitagami. Yeah. Um, yeah. And our, our latest edition is the student media classes and clubs that you see at the bottom there. And we'll show you that on the live side. It'll give it a lot more context. But that's how we have moved this into the learning component of the school by giving the classes a very specific place to build their portfolio, share their content. So it's shared with the community, but is also distinguished from all of the whole school um, content. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. So Vitagami um, is designed to be set up so that you are sharing what you want to share with each different segment of your community. We also have built-in consent management, and we have a part of Itagami that we call collections that allow you to curate and share outside of Itagami. All the other parts of Itagami are an invitation-only safe space for all your media, but we realize that, you know, you've got social media that's outside of Vitagami. You've got grandparents that you want to share with. You've got newsletters and you've got digital signage. So you've got things that you want to move outside of Vitagami and we have that too. Um, Sarah and Leslie, can you share a little bit about any parts of these that you think has been really helpful for your school? Um, I think for this part to be successful, IT and marketing have to work really close to get this set up annually. And I think we have gotten ourselves to a really consistent annual process. But for the because the permissions are based on the concept that you have access in the years that you attend the school, I have a timeline and a process where I take that data, ensure that we have all of the email addresses and all the accurate data and get that over to Vitagami so that the access is correct. And then Sarah have partners that with a really strong marketing strategy of ensuring that the uh, the albums and the sorry the categories are built, but that they have content in them before I annually invite the community in to see it. So and that that would make sense, I guess, a little bit more in context. But if I take care of all the accounts, she doesn't think about it twice. She knows that she can send out to the community and invite them in to see things and those accounts have already been handled for her. Yeah, and we're really lucky because we have these welcome days that every single class level participates in each year. So once we have photos from each of those welcome days uploaded, that's when we trigger the invites to go out so that people can see what's what happened on those days. And it gives them kind of a an insight, especially for freshman parents who are new here and, and new to the school to see kind of what our school community is like. All right. That's perfect. And um, I just want to mention, because most of the people on this call are, you know, have never used Vitagami or seen Vitagami. So as we mentioned, it is an invite only and users have access only to the years that they are active in the school. So as they mentioned, they have their welcome back event. And so they want to invite new parents and new students and have content up there because they're not going to see previous year content when they first log in. So that's why they have these back to school events. They take all these photos, they make sure they're uploaded to the current school year um, pages in Vitagami, and then they invite the parents and the students to be able to log in and see, you know, imagine you go to this event and then within a day or two, you now have access to these ama amazing photos um, with the promise that there's going to be photos going up all year. And so, you know, it, I'm sure it excites parents, especially those new freshman parents, you know, kids first 
you know, first time out of high school. And it's a little bit scary, even though they're in high school. So it, it's great that you share it that way. And then parents that have been there year after year will continue to see, you know, all four years of the photos that have been up and be able to build their student portfolios of photos from across their high school experience. So we promised we'd do marketing and communication. We realize most of you here are, that's your department. So we wanted to make sure Sarah talked about all the amazing ways that Vitagami has helped her and, and her job. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge help to me. I'm on it every single day, multiple times a day. So always on, <laughs> always on Vitagami. It's always a tab up for me. Um, well, first of all, presentations, anytime we need to do a presentation, for an open house or an event happening here on campus, we can use the Vitagami integration on PowerPoint to easily pull in photos without having to download those photos and then re-upload those. Um, so that's huge time saver. Um, we, we redesigned our website last year, um, which if anyone has ever done that, they know what a huge undertaking it is. <laughs> huge undertaking and we yes. have a small staff. Um, so having Vitagami as our photo resource made it really easy for me to find images for the new website. You'll see up there, um, the imagery really drives the website experience. Um, so having those beautiful photos at our fingertips was awesome. And the way we categorize them and arrange them made it super simple to find the images for each section of the website. Um, social media is actually interesting for us because I am a one person team. <laughs> so I freelance out our social media work and our freelancer actually has access to Vitagami. So anytime I give her sort of a bullet point list of things that we want to post on social, she can easily hop in and grab those images. There's no back and forth. There's no emailing or Google drives. Um, she just downloads them right from Vitagami and she hasn't had, I mean, she'd never used Vitagami before. She's had no issues using it or finding what she needs. Um, obviously printed materials. Um, we do, you know, we don't do as much printed stuff now, but when we do, you want to have really beautiful, crisp photos. So it's nice to have those. Um, and then our school newsletter um, that goes out every Wednesday and it used to kind of be more, um, more words and so I've tried to add more images to it over the past few years so it's great to be able to just quickly find photos that I can plug right into the newsletter um, and again not have to like go all around the school saying do you have a photo of Carla winning the <laughs> wrestling championship <laughs> over the weekend I have a photo of Carla that I'm going to use today I don't have to go ask anybody so that's awesome and then um Slideshows for, I already talked about slideshows a little bit, but also for our screens around the school. And I'll kind of pump that one to Leslie because she's <laughs> she's the expert on our screens. Uh, so we've used our screens in a few different ways. Uh, sometimes we are, so because you can curate the photos, as Renee mentioned earlier, into collections. Um, right now we have some screens that are owned by our student media classes. And part of their experience and their assignment is to curate collections, create the embed that rotates on our digital signage, which serves as their portfolio sharing, their art sharing, and helps get their content outside of the part of the building that other students may not visit if their class pathway doesn't take them there. So it helps them get their art kind of out and about. So we do a lot of the embeds, because you can do these uh, collections into embeds, we can put that on our slideshows pretty easily. I will sometimes pull that content right into Canva and make it into a presentation that the, I then put in an embed on the slideshows. And I never have to reach out to anyone and say, where are the photos from this event or that event? Because of the search features and the ability of tagging, we can find and curate the content that I need. I don't have to think about, I can go to an album and say, oh, I need something from that basketball game, but I don't need to. I can search for the different content It'll serve me a bunch of options, and then I can choose from that to use it to display on our signs. Um, for if there are any techies in the group, I've got some great like stuff I can tell you about later about between Google Drive and PowerPoint and Vitagami, but I will not do that to you now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you talk a little bit about um, we're on the learning slide? So you know, as we mentioned, learning moving Vitagami to learning was not an initial 
thought when you were looking for a media management solution, but now it's huge. Can you talk a little bit about, um, a little more about how you've you were used Vitagami with your media classes and then also how field trips and your global education has um, been able to share what is happening when they're, you know, in another country. Um, yeah, so I'll take the media class stuff since I worked the most closely on this crazy idea, <laughs> which is uh, a part of our media classes is a photojournalism class. And there's a, there are a few other components, but a lot of what they want to teach in that class is not only photo curation, but proper photo tagging, photo naming, photo uh, credit, copyright, all of those components. And Vitagami makes that structure really easy. It provides opportunity to name the photo, give it context, uh, give it all of its metadata is right there. So instead of, we used to actually do that in Windows on computers and then that data went nowhere. No one ever saw it. Those kids left the school and it was there. So we have built it explicitly into the curriculum where students are being assigned to go to events and they have to take photos at that event. In class, they then curate from what they've taken based on the parameters of the assignment. They upload those into different albums that have been created for them in Vitagami. And the teacher is using language like best of, which you can see on the screen, best of this at this event, best of this at that event. And they're teaching them good photo practices and using this tool to do so, which in turn is giving us content that we can then use in all of our publications. Uh, the other really neat thing we started to do is we do school photos like many schools at the start of every year. And we have Life Touch come in with their iPad and they take a nice frontal shot of every kid. <laughs> and in, I'm able to then download those photos and I name the file with the student name in order to teach how to navigate Vitagami and have the benefit of kicking off the facial recognition. I partner with the media students to go in to those photos annually. And because they can see the file name, they can now tag the kids. So they don't have to know them all. They're just learning a tagging process, which is having the side benefit of kicking off facial recognition because it's the ideal photo for the facial recognition to start identifying who students are. So that partnership has really enhanced our ability to use the search. So if we want to recognize a student in a newsletter, Sarah can search that student name and feel pretty confident that the auto tagging has kicked in and she can pull a variety of photos on that student. That's perfect. I yeah. just wanted to mention with, with face tagging, it does a couple of things. One is it allows you to search. Um, so that that is great. Two is it builds a portfolio of photos for this for those that are tagging, this primarily the students. And parents would have access to their students to see all the photos that they've um, been tagged in, which is you know amazing when you look at over four years, because the freshman coming in at you know 12, 13 looks very different than when they're graduating at 17 and 18. And especially if you're into sports, you can start building that you know portfolio of the action shots of all your sports. But one of the other things that facial recognition does, and I think we missed it on the previous slide, was to help with consent management. Would one of you be able to talk just briefly about um, how the built-in consent management works for your school? You yeah, I can talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So we have um, every year at the beginning, in the summer, actually, um, parents fill out forms for the year and we have a um, photo, photo and video consent form within that form system. Um, so they either opt in or opt out of photos. Um, and if they opt out, we pull that list and then we go into Vitagami and we opt all of those kids out. So we're actually, they're not going to show up in Vitagami anymore. They'll, they'll be removed essentially. So that helps me from a marketing standpoint to make sure I don't accidentally pull a photo of that kid and throw them, you know, on the front of a brochure or on our website and their parents don't want that. Um, but they can change their mind anytime. Like if they decide, oh, that was actually an accident. We do want to see our kid. Um, we can easily opt them back in and they'll show up. So their photos aren't disappearing per se, but they're just not, you don't see them on the platform. So it, it's, it's a great, easy way to keep track of that stuff without feeling like, we've got to like have a list and every time we're looking at a photo, I'll know who's in the photo, you know? Yeah. So, um, sorry, I got distracted by one of the sorry. questions. No, it was, I was reading <laughs> a question. Um, the facial recognition kicks off by some initial tagging. It's kind of a partnership of human with software. So it does both. So we intentionally create scenarios to tag that content 
which helps feed the opt out feature. So it understands who that kid is. So I have manufactured scenarios where we are tagging kids so that I know that each year it's properly starting out and identifying kids. And it's maybe the hardest in their first year. Once they've been here in their second year, it doesn't much, it's, it's had more content to generate from. Mm -hmm. um, the opt out for us has also been a great conversation starter with families because sometimes they just click that box. I don't want my kid in at all. And what starts to happen is the kid then participates in a, in a, a theater production or some other event and all the families are in there looking at the pictures from the event and they're like, wait, where's my kid? And it's a great way to have that conversation and say, your kid actually has opted out. That's why their photos aren't showing up. And we can then talk to them about how their photos are protected in this closed platform because only our community can access them. So if they would like to change that so they can see those photos, then it's a, it's a really nice way to have a conversation that it's not all or nothing and how and why we are protecting their images. Perfect. All right, and then just a little bit about your global education program and how Vitagami has helped with that. Gosh, I love that feature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like one of our favorite features actually. Um, so we have, we have about six global education trips every year. And in the past we've had people taking photos and putting them on. Google Photos or Smug Mug or some, you know, all Instagram. these Instagram, <laughs> all these different places. And we didn't really have one place where we were gathering them. And myself, I was trying to email people and say, can you send me these photos and I'll upload them to Vitagami? Well, now on Vitagami, there's a feature where people can upload their own photos. So, for example, um, we have students going to Quebec in a couple of weeks. We have an album created for them. They have the upload link so they can upload photos while they're there, or they can do it when they get back, or a mix of both. Um, and I have access to the photos for everything I need them for, but they also have a great collection of, you know, of the trip right there that their parents can see um, without, again, it just empowers the parents to go in and look at those photos. We don't have to serve them up to them per se. And we can show you all that when yeah. we hop into our yeah. live site. I think we're just about there. Yes, yeah, so we got there. one more slide. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so as you heard, they have over sixteen hundred students, and in most years. Um, our founder looked up the statistics, so it, it isn't just in my brain. About 60% <laughs> of their photos come from the students in the last few years. So that's just, you know, um, amazing because think about all those extra photos that Sarah now has access to that she wouldn't. So, you know, it's just the community. It truly is community media management. Um, they have over 300,000 photos and videos. So I just saw a question about, uh, can you store videos? Yes, you can. There's some size limitations. And if you reach out for a demo, we can give you all those statistics. Of course, this tells you know millions of stories all about their one Cardinal Gibbons community. So uh, thank you for being willing to share your live sites. If you want to pop over to that and just you know talk about um, Vitagami in the context of your live site. Thanks. And yeah. um, Rob, you can pop in back and forth with questions if we didn't get to any of them. You want okay. to um, keep on? Yeah. You want me to take this one? Sure. Um, Either way. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this actually was a trip we took to Italy last year. I got to chaperone. It's my first time in Italy. Ooh, Super cool. Yay. Got to watch other people's kids in Italy. It was so much fun. Um, <laughs> and right before that trip is actually when the upload link feature came out. Right. That's right. So previously you had to create, you had to think about creating an album and then adding your content to it. And this took that away from all the contributors. Cause now I'm in Italy with a bunch of teenagers who are, who are taking tons of photos, but they're not, their first thought is not, Hey, let me put that on Vitagami. Right. Or where should I put that on Vitagami? So I was able to create a link and push it out in our group me to the chat and say, Hey, as you're, I'm watching them as they're taking photos, add these, add these, add these. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we ended up with 724 photos. Ooh, now, wow, I know nice. that I uploaded some of those, <laughs> but I guarantee you I did not upload 724. <laughs> and it's kind of neat because some of them are, the, are similar, but they're similar experiences from different angles. And we were able to share that link out with their families who maybe wanted to see what was happening while we took their kids overseas. And it was just a neat way to have that. And our website had really outdated Italy photos and Sarah was able to go ahead and grab them and update our content for our global yeah. education with things that were a little more current. I think some of our photos still had masks in them. Like we, yeah. <laughs> we really needed to update some content. Um, so it was really timely when that feature came out cause I got to test it out 
and I'm really, I'm really proud of it. Honestly, yeah, it's awesome. We, we love it. We yeah, I just, I just want to note that. Yeah, any container you can grab a link to, yeah. and then you can put that it, like you said, us. you can share it anywhere. You can put it on your calendar. If you're doing like a yeah. fundraiser, yeah. you can do a QR code. They can take a photo, and and when they upload their photos, um, probably on their mobile device is where they are. Yes. It just goes directly yep. to the container sure. that you want yeah. them yeah. to put them in. It took a lot of the navigation or any kind of barrier out of right. the way, honestly. If yeah. you give someone a quick way to put a photo in, they will, has been my experience. Yeah, and this obviously helps with marketing for future trips, so it's just awesome to have all these photos. Yeah, well, I know I'm nervous when my kid was an overseas trip. So yeah. it's, you know, I, I just being able to see what's going on it's from not only the chaperones, good. but the students, you know, yeah. it would make me feel good as a parent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. And going back to, um, we were talking about the watermark earlier for professional photography. So this is an example. Um, this is a concert that took place um in december so as you'll see when you click in it has a watermark and when people go up here they they can't download it but they can see that it's there um and when you go back to the top of the page we have here that this these photos are by Zul photography and you can purchase them from this website um so like leslie said we get a hugely discounted rate from this photographer i mean we pay about a third of what we normally would um and he comes to a lot of our events um because he knows he is going to get something from us and we can use these for marketing, obviously. Um, but the students can purchase them if they want the parents or students. And it's just a really easy feature to use. Turn off and turn on. And then the consent, this is our page here where these are all of our students who were opted out. So you'll see, we don't have a lot of, I mean, we have 1600 students and we have seven who have opted out. So it's obviously not a lot of students, um, but just great to have them here. So we know who they are. Yeah. And it's lovely because it is a single checkbox that if the parents say, oh no, we don't want to opt out anymore. All the photos that have been pulled from Vitagami are not deleted, as they mentioned, yes. they're yeah. just stored in a back area. And literally they'll go back to the containers that they belong in as soon as you turn off that opt out feature. Right. So that that's yeah. really nice. We've got schools that have younger students and often preschool and kinder parents will turn this option on. And then when there's their students get a little older, they'll turn it off and then right. they'll have access to those photos. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab that smug mug question because I want to say that, yes, it has eliminated our use of smug mug. And very specifically, Sarah, if you just click any of the tabs, I just want to show on the left there where it says recent pages for Sarah. So those are places she has clicked on. It's keeping track of where she's traveled on the site. If you truly use this in the way that it is designed, what we can do and sometimes do for families is if a kid is on a team and I add them to a certain page, that left side is curated to your family. So they will a family is automatically served, the class their kids are in, the team they're on, the art they participate in. So you can do that just... Again, it's the partnership between communications and data. If I get a team roster and upload it, the parents are also attached to that kid. So I just say, I identify the kids and say, these kids should see these photos. So when the parent first logs in, their their experience can be curated for them as well. Yeah. Right. We also have um, favorites. So, right. So are your parents or actually, you know, teachers too can go in and favorite the pages that they want to see. So with a single click, they can click over and see just their favorites, both in the feed, which is your front page, sort of like your social media feed, as yeah. well as the explore area, which I know you'll show um, in both places with favorites. And then a single click, they can again be engaged in the entire community experience. Yeah. Yep. And that's uh, our feed. Yeah. This is the feed. That's yep. the feed. So that's, I think, where Sarah spends her time looking to see, hey, what's new at the school that I didn't know about? Yeah. <laughs> like the CAP 6 conference championship. This is going to go into our weekly newsletter today. <laughs> Were you there? I wasn't there. You weren't there. No, but you have there. all the content. Yeah, but I have all the content. So it's can, awesome. can you show the um one of the, the I think it's a collection. You were mentioning that you're learning. Um, one of your yeah. learning yep. things is being able to put in like who took the photos, giving all that that yes. copyright and credit information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So this here is a collection that the student media class made. Again, it's part of their curriculum to get to this point. So they have all these stages where they get through. And one of their requirements, as you can see, is to write this description up here about what is the event, who attended, who took these photos. And that's the overall picture. But then when you click into one of the photos, yeah, this is this amazing. One. I'm sorry. This is just I'm, really like, wow. I'm really proud of the learning heart on this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that way. Oops. Over there. Yeah. So this part is where we are really have been really successful with our students in that class specifically. Okay. If they're not in those classes, I'm not pretending that they're doing this work this deeply. <laughs> if they're in that Love class, it. this is the expectation, which is they title their photo, they give it descriptions, captions, they tag the people. Um, sometimes they're using the keywords and the copyright, depending on the lesson and the information, but it is all part of, um, it is all part of that learning experience. And not only for what the kid is learning, but it is also teaching our community about giving proper credit for content mm -hmm. and who should, right. who the, should the photo should be attributed to, who took that photo, what was happening, what's the right. context of the photo. And in 10 mm -hmm. years, when I'm not here, Somebody can get the context of that. Wait, photo wait you're not going to be here in 10 years? What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm still going to be doing this in 10 years. I don't know. But just in case. Right. Yeah, <laughs> got it. Just in case that, I move on. That's lovely. Yeah. Thank um, you for sharing. I appreciate you sharing your site. Yeah, yeah, I know we've run um, over with about almost 15 minutes, but it was such great content. So I want to make sure we're getting to some of the questions, but I also want to let you know if you're still here, thank you for, for hanging on. Um, and we will answer your questions. We have people that are going to go through the questions we don't get to, and they will reach out to you with the answers. You are also, of course, invited to um, schedule a demo, and we can walk through you know, specifically how this might look for you. Keep in mind, Cardinal Gibbons has been using this for seven plus years. Yeah. And they said it's changed, right? They did not have these great learning experiences year one. Matter of fact, I think you said this is your first full year that you've implemented this. Yeah. So it's it's not going to look, you know, you're probably not going to have every single part of your community jump in day one using Vitagami, parents and staff and students, right? So it takes a while and we work with you to help you on that journey. Um, so um, I could see a couple of the questions that people put in chat. So I just want to grab one or two. And then, Rob, if you, there are some um, others that I missed, let me know. So one is um, we, yes, one of the questions was SISs. We support Vitagami. I mean, we support Veracross. We support Blackbaud. And we use WAND, which syncs with a lot of SISs, such as ISAMs and SIMs. So all of those users are, are brought in through your SIS. If you don't have an SIS we support, we use, um, which is also what Cardinal Gibbons uses, a CSV process where you send us your parents and your students and your staff, and we bring all those into our, um, into Vitagami. And that's your pool of people who you can both tag as well as invite to be part of the system. Uh, um, right. Uh, one quick question. What security is in place for outsiders, family members, community members having access to school photos for personal and professional use? I don't know. Do you, um, so you can you add anybody you want. You physically have to add them. Um, Sarah and Leslie, do you want to talk about how you've added like your professional photographer or your contractors that need access to um, Vitagami? Well, we actually upload those photos for them. They send us oh, okay. to, to okay. um, us and we upload those. Um, okay. But in terms of like privacy, we just invite our parents and our students and right. okay. if um, and our collections that we share that are more curated. We can share those publicly um, through a link or embed on our website or, um, you know, in a class project. So those are more public and can be shared. But so okay. you're just kind of keeping every single photo is not out there for people to see. It's a more curated, like if you were creating a slideshow of, you know, global education, right. it's not all 700 photos, it's 20 photos. Right. Um, the that, two other yeah. layers that we add to that are role permissions. So we can assign, and I, I think this will tackle a different question in there as well. We have different roles that we've developed and we allow cer certain roles can tag, certain roles can download, certain roles cannot download. Like there's different permission levels that we can set. And additionally, it includes the ability for a user to report their own photo. So if a photo of me yeah. comes up that I do not want shared, 
if I report it, it goes into a queue of admin moderation, but as soon as it does that, it is removed from the entire system. So users have some agency over what content they may or may not want shared of them. Yeah, here's the report right here. Yeah, report looks like that. Yeah, so they can say why. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, other questions, Rob, that have come yeah, up? Renee, how about, is it a media management software or more of an archiving solution? Um, yes, and. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes and yes and community engagement, right? Yes, yes and yes, yes, because our alumni, our alumni director now uses this software um, when she has alumni events to pull photos from previous years um, so that the, the people who obviously went to school here can see photos of themselves. Um, and it's just going to get better and better the longer we use the software, obviously. Um, and I did neglect to say earlier, part of why we did this is we had historical archive that I wanted to maintain. Uh, and we do have this going back all the way to 1900 because our school was founded in 1909. <laughs> and <laughs> over time, it, it's a, it's not it does not happen overnight. OK, it really doesn't. Um, over time, as people leave, as I.T. starts moving storage from one location to another, we search for JPEGs, we search for photos and I just start moving content in. Like so it's it's it, it just pieces. It's not an, in one time. But as I find content. I am targeted about getting it in there and notifying other people, hey, I've updated this year. I've been able to get some alumni content in there that we might want for the school. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, yeah. uh, how, how did this make finding photos uh, easier for you versus say a Google Drive or? Yeah, we always get a lot of questions about, you know, why should I pay for Vitagami when I've got Google Drive for free? Sure. I, I, would, I always feel like that. Google Drive is like, it's awesome tool, but you can find yourself getting into a rabbit hole of going <laughs> to folder after folder after folder, right? Like that gets kind of daunting. With this, we have the categories, which are those top level that mirror our website. And then we have pages, which are like, um, yeah, Leslie's going to drive for me. Um, so we have <laughs> categories and then we have pages, which are like fine arts, is the category and then the page would be music. And then within music, you can see all of the different concerts going on. So it's pretty easy to navigate because of we've been so intentional about how we set it up. But then the search feature is also really good too. So if you have, you know, junior mass is a weekly or is a yearly event that happens to us, clearly you can see a bunch of different junior mass things here. Um, so it's really easy to find stuff without kind of going down that rabbit hole. You can also remember that it's set up by year. So you can also add a search term yes. of the year if you're looking for yeah. something in a specific year. Yeah, Which is absolutely. super helpful because we do, you know, we do graduation slideshows at every graduation. So I can go back four years and see, you know, the students kind of through all the years. How much cool. time as a new client would you estimate it will take to set this up for the first time? Okay, I'll take that one because it's been a while since you guys have set it up. Um, we, we've gotten that question several times, and I say it could take anywhere from a couple of hours to a year. And that sounds really scary, but we're talking about, you know, bringing in your community, your, your you know, educational administrators, your IT people, your marketing people, admissions people to talk about how do we want to organize this? And then after you finish a year of using it, you're going to bring them in again to talk about, did this organization work? Do we need to tweak this? Right. Now, if the question is just how long does it take to get it set up to upload my first photo? A couple of hours right? Um, we, we get your, your users in via either a sync or a CSV. We help you set up your, you know, your holders, your pages, and then you just start uploading. So that part is easy. The, the part that takes a while is, you know, getting it figured out for how do you want to use it to your school? How are you rolling this out to your staff? How are you helping them move from uploading to Google? I saw a couple of questions saying my, my teachers really love Google to uploading to Vitagami. What does that look like? How are you then sharing these with parents? Because you might not roll this out to your parents right away. So we work with you through this whole process. Oh, please yes. jump in. I say we didn't roll it to our parents right away. And Thank my you. answer to that question from someone who's done it is, I think it depends on what your immediate, your short-term and long-term goals are. And I think that those can be different, different stages. Yep, yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we work with you 
you know, throughout yeah. the process. And um, I do want to mention, you know, you mentioned that we we do have a Microsoft Power um, PowerPoint plugin and a Canva plugin will be coming probably <laughs> at the end, within a week. Um, I know you, you guys are excited about getting the Canva yeah, integration in this. Yeah. Okay, we've run way over. Thank you. I think all all of you stayed with us. I totally appreciate it. Again, if we didn't get to any questions, somebody will reach out to you. Love to have you um, schedule a demo so we could talk to you specifically about how this can work for your school. And don't forget, there'll be a really short survey and we want to make um, our webinars better every month. And we really do read your input that you put on the survey so that we can do that. And a, a huge thank you to Leslie and Sarah for this. Your school is amazing. You're using Vitagami. Amazing. The learning part just like, oh, gives me tingles. I love it. <laughs> We're excited. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody.